introduction. Uh, so this talk will be structured as follows. Uh, I'll be introducing the area. And, uh, and believe me, you have not gone back a day. You're still in lattices. Uh, then I'll be talking about our construction uh, and how we improve on prior work. And then I'll be talk, uh, if I have time, I'll be talking about the proof of security and what essentially enables us to achieve the improvements that we do. So pseudo random functions uh, have been ubiquitous uh, in symmetric key cryptography, talked about a lot yesterday. Uh, basically, uh, they are a family of functions uh, which are uh, parameterized by the secret key or the seed. And once you uh, choose a seed at random and uh, initialize the function, it is completely ran uh, sorry, uh, it is completely deterministic and also indistinguishable from a random function. So there are three basic ways of constructing a pseudo-random function, which is provably secure. The first is the Goldreich Goldwasser Mikali construction. Uh, and this uh, makes the use of a pseudo-random generator. Uh, and it invokes it once for each bit of the pseudo-random function input. As you can see, it is uh, highly sequential in the length of the input. So maybe we can do better with regards to efficiency if we had a direct construction. Uh, two such constructions. The first is uh, bro uh, first broadly in the, uh, in the framework of number theoretic constructions. And the idea is uh, essentially take a product of a group of exponents, and then you raise the group generator to that power. Um, and the security is from de decision Diffie-Hellman factoring and so on. And then there are uh, lattice-based construction by uh, us and Alon Rosen. And the framework is uh, very similar the, in, in that you take a product of uh, matrix or ring elements. And instead of exponentiation, now you round. And the security is from lattice assumptions, like learning with errors. Uh, so now let's talk about key homomorphic pseudorandom functions. And the key homomorphism is in the sense of additive homomorphism. Uh, we can efficiently, uh, given the output of the function on input x with uh, seeds uh, s and t, respectively, we can compute uh, the output of the function on the same input x, but on the seed uh, s plus t. So this has a lot of applications, and I'll go into this. The first uh, such construction uh, was proposed, uh, again, uh, by now Reingold and Pinkas. Um, and this is a decision Diffie-Hellman-based uh, construction. The security is in the random oracle model. And the applications they propose are to distribute the operation of a KDC, a key distribution center. And then last crypto, there was uh, this work by uh, Bonet, Liui, uh, Montgomery, and Raghunathan. Uh, the security is in the standard model now, and uh, this is based on lattice assumptions, uh, the learning with errors problem. And uh, the, the framework is very similar to one of the constructions uh, of the previous uh, BPR paper, uh, uh, in that they, they, their proof is, their construction and proof is based on the rounded subset product construction. And therefore, they also inherit similar drawbacks as the BPR construction in that uh, they have a, a, a huge LWE error approximation factor, and therefore uh, they have huge parameters, key sizes, and so on. Uh, BPR also give non-key homomorphic pseudorandom functions which, with better parameters. So they have like a slew of constructions, which is like a spectrum of constructions. So some of them have better parameters, but they have slightly worse, but still polylog depth. Um, the question is, can we uh, achieve similar analogs which are key homomorphic, but also have these better parameters? So in this talk, we answer this question positively. We say uh, we uh, achieve construction of new key homomorphic pseudorandom functions from lattices, uh, which still have polylogarithmic depth. And they also have uh, roughly uh, quasi-linear uh, key sizes. Uh, where well, lambda is uh, lambda is uh, the length of the length of the input. So, I mean, this is essentially quasi-optimal if you ignore if, if you ignore log factors because to achieve two to the lambda security, you would need uh, lambda bits of randomness uh, as your seed. 
so in particular, these are the first sublinear depth PRFs, which either key homomorphic or otherwise, which achieve this uh, quasi-optimal uh, key sizes. As a point of contrast, uh, this, uh, these uh, are some numbers which, uh, again, log factors have been suppressed. These are some numbers which uh, contrast the two constructions from last year and this work. And if you take the ring analogs, uh, you get even better uh, parameters. Uh, we also provide a new proof technique, which might find use elsewhere. So let's talk about the construction. Before I talk about our construction, I'll rewind you to a year and uh, talk about the Bourdain et al. construction from last crypto. The secret key is a ZQ vector, and the public parameters are two, uh, two matrices, uh, which are both binary matrices, and the input is a k-bit uh, bit string. Uh, the, uh, sub, the construction, is, uh, the construction uh, framework is, has been used uh, before. And it's the subset product construction. Uh, depending on bits of input, you choose the appropriate matrix, multiply them all, pre-multiply with your secret key, and uh, round to a smaller modulus p than q. And just to rejog your memory, rounding works as follows. The ticks there are zq values, and 0, 1, and 2 represent zp values. All the green rounds to 1, all the blue rounds to 0, all the red rounds to 2. So this is only somewhat key homomorphic because of the rounding operation in the sense that uh, given fs and ft, fs plus t uh, is within plus minus one of the sum of the two. Uh, however, this, is, uh, this does not uh, kill, kill us. Uh, we still achieve uh, all the nice applications that uh, they do with only somewhat key homomorphism. And the proof strategy, I'll just briefly talk about it, uh, is again, uh, is a legacy of the BPR uh, proof. And what we essentially do is we add uh, some short error. And so if you would recall, the B matrices are all binary matrices. So we can add the, this short error inside the rounding. So the rounding just, uh, throws, uh, just uh, rounds away the error. And then we invoke LWE, and then we continue the proof in a GGM sort of way by pushing uh, bits uh, from the, from the inpu input out in the, uh, out in the seed. And thus we randomize the seed and go on. So if you notice, the error is multiplied by a product of roughly KB matrices here. And uh, therefore, the error and thus the LWE approximation factor uh, grows exponential in the input length k. And this is uh, essentially what uh, gives them their uh, slightly worse uh, parameters and key sizes. Uh, some more background. Essentially, all this has been discussed uh, in this uh, session a lot. So the two properties of the gadgets and the bit decomposition operation that I would, uh, that I would stress upon in this talk is uh, in our, uh, in our um, so we'll be talking about uh, this short and fat a, a matrices, which are expanded by the G inverse operation into square matrices, which are all binary 0, 1 matrices. And the G, uh, the gadget matrix, essentially uh, inverts the operation uh, of this uh, uh, bit decomposition operator G inverse. And they have been, they have a widely used tool uh, in lattice cryptography, as you all saw. Uh, and now we go on to R construction. Uh, so in our construction, uh, we use ZQ matrices. And in the rest of this talk throughout, we'll be using ZQ matrices. Uh, so we'll be using, uh, so before I actually talk about our construction, I'll be introducing this new function AT, uh, which, uh, and which, has, uh, which is parameterized by this full binary tree T. So by a full binary tree, I mean that every leaf has uh, either no children at all, or it has two children. There's no leaf with just a left child or just a right child. And this function is defined recursively, and the length of the input is the number of leaves in the tree, which is uh, determined that absolute value of t. So it, the function is defined recursively uh, for, uh, for a single node uh, tree t uh, with corresponding one bit input. Uh, the function is just defined as a0 or a1 appropriately, depending on what the value of the bit is. And the recursive case, uh, you split the tree into the left subtree and the right subtree, and you split the input uh, appropriately as well. And you compute the function on the left subtree, compute the function on the right, 
take the g inverse of the right result and uh, multiply it with the left. So that's what we do, this sort of asymmetric operation. Uh, and this gives rise to a new construction. Uh, the public parameters are these ZQ matrices, A0, A1, and the full binary tree T. And to evaluate the function, essentially we evaluate the function AT, uh, pre-multiply it with the secret key S, and uh, round. And since we also round, we also are only somewhat key homomorphic, just as the Bonnet et al. construction, and we have the same applications. That's good. So now, next we'll be talking about this tree, and what sort of, uh, and what are the characteristics of this tree which determine uh, and how they affect the function. So the first characteristic I'll be talking about is this uh, property called the sequentiality of, tree, of the tree. And the sequentiality is just a fancy word for the right depth of the tree. And the, by the right depth, I mean that if you take the maximum over all the leaves of the tree, the number of right edges in a path from the root to the leaf. For instance, the right depth in this tree would be two. Uh, so why the sequentiality is important is it, roughly, it denotes the number of nested G inverses in a computation of A sub T. And this, uh, this uh, nesting dominates the circuit depth of the PRF. So the circuit depth of the PRF is proportional to the sequentiality. The next property is the expansion. And this is essentially the number of G inverse products that you could have. This is the left depth of the tree, which is defined analogously to the right depth. And uh, why the expansion is important is because the LW approximation factor is exponential in the expansion now and not in the input length. Um, so now we are playing a delicate, uh, delicate game of balancing between the sequentiality and expansion. Given a sequentiality and expansion, the maximum number of leaves or the maximum input length is given by this uh, E plus S choose S. And this, uh, tree which achieve this maximum can be constructed in a dynamic programming fashion. For S2 and E2, this is that tree with six leaves, as you'd expect. So now we'll be talking about a few instantiations which uh, show, us, uh, uh, show us this interplay between the sequentiality and the expansion. The first tree we consider is this left spine, which has sequentiality one. If you would see, right depth is one and it has expansion lambda minus one. So because of the high expansion of this tree, it suffers from this, uh, it has a big LW approximation factor and therefore it suffers from big key and parameter sizes. Again, I'm suppressing lambda factors. And so it turns out that this is exactly the Bonnet et al construction. Turns out their construction is just an instantiation of our construction. So that's one cool fact. Uh, the next, uh, tree we consider is this right spine, which is the exact opposite. It has high sequentiality lambda minus one, and only uh, one uh, expansion. So since it has small expansion, it achieves nice uh, key and parameter sizes, but this is highly sequential. So evaluation of this function, I mean, someone who does practical would not like this tree at all, because it's as sequential as a GGM construction. So there's somewhere, there's a middle ground as well, and if you would consider a tree like a balanced tree with equal sequentiality and expansion, it has both log, log base four sequentiality and expansion, and this achieves uh, same, uh, similar key sizes as the, as the aggressive right spine tree, but it also has relatively lower depth than the right spine. Now uh, I'll be talking about the proof of security. And in particular, we'll be trying to modify the proof of security that Bonnet et al. used. So let's see, let's try to walk through that proof and see where we run into trouble. So the format of the, so we'll be looking at the tree in this fashion. We'll single out the leftmost leaf of the tree, which has been labeled by the appropriate input bit x0 there. And we'll consider all these subtrees hanging off from the ancestors of the leftmost branch. And let's say the leftmost, uh, leftmost leaf has some depth d greater than one, greater than or equal to one. So there are these t1 through td, which are the subtrees hanging off the right children of its ancestors. OK. So some, some thought would uh, show that the a sub t, uh, a, a t of this, uh, 
of this particular tree expands as shown, AX0 times a bunch of G inverse uh, products. So as usual, we add some error and then we replace it uh, with uniform invoking the LW assumption. And again, the error is multiplied by a bunch of G inverse matrices now. So uh, if you'd recall G inverse, uh, the operation G inverse uh, gives a 0, 1 matrix as output. So again, it's just a short error being multiplied by a bunch of short matrices. Overall, it's, uh, we are only adding a short error. And therefore, uh, the rounding takes care of that. So, as, as, so, so far, we've been following the BPR, the Bonnet, uh, Bonnet et al. paradigm, and we are good. And now, this is where we run into trouble when we, when we want to iterate through the proof as we did earlier. We want to add some more error now. Uh, but if you notice, the multiplicand of the uniform is now a G inverse of A T1. And in, uh, and in general, T1 might have more than one leaf. And now we can't embed an LW challenge here because, uh, the, because this is highly structured and dependent on the bits of X1. So it's not uh, independent anymore. So what do we do? This is the key new idea in the proof, is we replace U with a S times G plus uh, this new V, which is just uh, an independent uniform residue modulo G. So the key thing to note here is that V is independent of S times G. OK. So if we replace the U with uh, S times G plus V, we get this uh, S times G cancels with the G inverse. And we, now the AT1 comes out in the open. And there's this other additive V term that we forget for the rest of the proof. So if you'd, if you'd one moment of thought, if you stare at this a little hard for one moment, you'll notice that uh, this new, new product, this AT1 times G inverse of the rest, is actually the A sub T of this new tree, where uh, T1 has been promoted, in the, uh, promoted to its parent, and the leftmost leaf has been thrown out of the tree. So this new tree, uh, T prime, has one less leaf than the previous tree, and it also removes one bit from the input and puts it in S sub X0. So now we are at a position where we can iterate the proof. And uh, a very similar GGM sort of iteration gives us uh, S sub X. And, for, and if now these V terms come back into the picture. So for each bit that we pull out, we add another V term. So are we in trouble? Turns out not, because the, if you'd recall, the V terms are independent of S. So since S sub X is uniform, if you add any, in, any, any number of independent terms to a uniform term, it still stays uniform. And therefore, we are finally uniform. So that concludes the proof. And uh, yeah, so the main uh, uh, concluding, we talked about uh, new key homomorphic PRFs, and we gave a new proof technique. That's it. <laughs>